bless the name of the Lord our God. And he's a wonderful father to all of us. Today we are going to read Mark chapter 10 from verse 23 to verse 25. Mark 10, 23 to 25. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Wonderful thing. But you know what this thing teaches us? The heart of man is always in riches, in wealth. Who we'll call it in doing well, in achieving something, but that's the tendency of man. I think it's a natural sequence of living in this world that you want to get better. Every day as you grow older, you want to get better. As the day breaks, you want to achieve something. So man is tended in that direction. And that is why when Jesus made the first statement, how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, ah, the disciples were astonished. Ah, we live in this world, and all of us are thinking of how to do better. I suppose that when they followed Jesus, they were also thinking of how they would better their lives. And so it was strange to them that he said, if you are doing well, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. And then it would look to them also like a group of people who have been removed from the kingdom of heaven, those who are rich. And that's the way the world seems to function even today. It looks like those who are rich are consigned to hellfire. It looks like those who are rich are not part of the kingdom. And yes, truly, so many of the rich, not only of the rich, of the poorest, they are joined up with the devil in one form or the other. So it's not a function of the rich only that they are into all manner of things. But even the poorest are also there. But what Jesus said to them looked like riches are condemned. Because the human tendency is to look for something, to get something, to do better, to improve. And there has to be improvement. If wealth is not improvement, what else would you call improvement? Because no matter the education you have in this world, you have to have resources to live by. You need resources to conduct your life. And the resources are needed in, in continuously increasing volumes and quantities as you live. If you were a child, somebody's child, what you need will come from there. But you start to live on your own, you need things for yourself. Before you know it, you need things for your wife. If you have children, you need things for children. Even if you didn't have a wife, as you grow older, responsibilities are fostered upon you by the situations of life. And you need to grow to be able to achieve a lot so that you can reach out to others. So it was an astonishing statement. How would he say that those who are rich are out of the kingdom? And Jesus took his time to explain it. There is nothing wrong with wealth. There is absolutely everything wrong with trusting in those riches. Because when your focus is in the riches, when your trust is in the riches, you'll do everything to become rich. And you'll do everything to sustain that level that you have arrived at and to increase from the natural for man. But the man who is truly wealthy is the one that recognizes that God is the source of his wealth. And that nothing can take it away from him except God. And God is not that kind of father. He is an extremely gracious father to his children, merciful to the extreme, with showing loving kindness at all times. And if you had such a father, you trust in him, not in the riches. Yes, somebody wants to cheat me out of the other one, he's free. But if I'm trusting in riches, I'll make sure that I destroy that person to get it. It doesn't matter to me how many people are down so long as I achieve what I want to achieve because I trust in that thing. But if I trusted in God, it does not matter what is happening around me. God will provide that which is sufficient to me. 
A trusting in God is a declaration that what he does for me is the best. I'll follow his direction and I'll achieve what I have to achieve, which is best for my life. A trusting in riches is that I must get that thing. I must get that money. I must get that material, get the other house, get whatever. Because if I don't get it, I am going to fail. If I don't get it, my value is going to come down and I might find myself not succeeding in the things that I want to do. So I must do everything to get it. Not only to get it, I must do everything to maintain it. You know, at that point, killing is nothing. At that point, cheating is nothing. At that point, I have to cut corners. At that point, I have to ride roughshod on others. At that point, I have to deny people of their rights. At that point, I'll go to every extreme, whatever it may be, to ensure that I grab, continue to grab, and supposedly continue to grow with it. Now we are talking. So when you are talking about, oh, the, well, the rich man will not enter the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about the man who is trusting in his riches. Because there is nothing you will not do to get it. You, how are you getting the things you are getting? Even at the poor level. There are people who are working in so many places. What is your truthful age, the one that you declared? How will you enter heaven with the falsehood that you are living? The income you are earning, you are earning by a false certificate. How did you pass your exam in school? By cheating. And you have a certificate to show for it. And you claim that it belongs to you. This is talking about trusting in God. Rather than doing every form of evil to achieve whatever you think you are achieving. Can you refrain from that path? Yes, somebody has to make amends today. Somebody has to make confession today. Somebody has to make restitution today. It's not enough to confess. Zacchaeus confessed and made prompt restitution. Everything changed for him. What if he only confessed and continues to ac accumulate the things that he had stolen from people? How would God have seen him? You have stolen so much from everybody, from the society, and you say, I repented. God has become money laundering affair. So once you say I've repented, everything is right. <sighs> there has to be a change. And there must be a change. And you have to effect that change in your life. It is time to bring forth that change. And if you do bring forth that change, the wonderful favor of God shall come upon you. Already the mercy of God is willing to cleanse you. The blood of Jesus is ready to take you up. But you have to do the U-turn. Restitute where you have to restitute. Change things today. Don't live in that falsehood. Don't live that life of lying. The life you live today is a lie. It's not your own life. There are some of us who are even bearing other people's names because you stole somebody's certificate and you are living by it. Whether you stole or bought it is the same thing. But let's change today. If you are already living your straightforward life and all of those falsehoods are not attached to your life, focus on God. Because this word of today is going to change your position wonderfully. God will reward your straightforwardness today. God will bring about for you an improvement, an elevation, an increase. And I pray that what he brings about for you will not be the reason for you to fall. Because there are so many people that fall because things are good for them. You will not be one of them. Rather than that, what he brings for you is going to focus you more and more upon him. And the best of life shall come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.